Hey guys, Brad here with the post repair video. Uh, I do these for all the customers. Um, this one's for Jeff. And um, this is a Robotron board set I went through. And I'll go through and explain what I did. And we'll go through and boot it up and uh, run through some of the diagnostic tests and a little gameplay as well. So this is the MPU. This is a Rev C. Uh, this came in, had an old 2532 coin cell. I pulled that out. I had to jump around the front. I put it on the rear for the ground connection. This is CR2450, which is quite a bit thicker than a CR2032 and um, probably about three times the capacity. So that goes in uh, down here, replace an electrolytic cap, uh, 22 microfarad used for soft start with the tantalum. We've got uh, three new Nichicon electrolytics for the uh, input filter caps, all new Molex headers here, video, your um, memory protect interlock switch, and then of course power here. And this board at some point was modified for 4164 uh, RAM. This is a single voltage. Uh, there's a lot of different ways I've seen the mod done with jumpers on the back of the board and cutting traces. Uh, obviously, you can also buy the adapter from Arcade Shop that you put in. But I'm able to do it all in the uh, connector here. See, I cut one of the pins for the minus 5 volts. And then where the uh, 12 volt is, it goes back to feed the RAM normally for power. We, I bridge it over underneath the board uh, just on these Molex headers uh, to send five volts in, in lieu of the 12. So it works really well. I didn't come up with that mod. I think I, you know, seen it, Bob Roberts or somebody had, had written it up years ago. Uh, decoders, the labels were pretty bad looking. So I cut those off and put some reproduction ones I make on the decoders. All the socketed chips, I pull out, straighten the legs, clean them, put them back in. Same with the uh, CPU here, the 6809. Uh, this board, when I did power it up, had two bad RAM. Not sure one was uh, at position 31 and one was at uh, 14 so i uh, got new ones in there rock solid rom board um, not a lot wrong with this but it did get all new molex headers two new electrolytic filter caps again all the legs straightened and cleaned new ribbon cable installed um, i did put uh, labels uh, reproduction labels on the decoders they didn't have any sometimes they didn't uh, io board widget board also known as two new molex uh, headers and these have the square pins instead of round pins there's a lot more surface area on all these uh, that's the main reason why i change them plus they're notorious for cold solder joints uh, we've got a new nichicon filter cap for power here new ribbon cable as well these are all 3m parts that i use uh, none of that chinese junk um, soundboard all new electrolytics on it this has a, a eight electrolytics i replaced three of the electrolytic uh, aluminum uh, cans with tantalum here for these little uh, decoupling capacitors all new Molex headers. We've got a new bridge rectifier I put on here. I pull the fuses out. I tighten up the uh, little friction terminals for them. And then um, I also clean up the fuses with the 3M scotch Bright and clean them up and you know make sure everything's symmetrical. I tighten and uh, put new heat sink compound behind the amplifier and the uh, 7805 uh, voltage regulator. Uh, put a reproduction label on the ROM after I clean those pins. Uh, and then I do tend to return all the old parts back to the customers um on this job i do have another board set of joust that he sent me at the same time so i'll probably just put them all in the bag um you can see the old battery in there and uh you know, battery holder all the caps things like that and then jeff also requested for a sinistar this is that new rom set i don't know if you guys saw the video but it has the jet plume and a pause mode and the amoa uh, logo with the blood dripping on the sinistar so this is a full rom set including uh, sound ROM 9 that uh, we recently fixed the uh, so the sound test works and not only does it test all of the, uh, the the sounds on the primary board but it also does the speech so sending that out that garbage on the screen is just some artifacts from my CGA to VGA converter you know I've got a little thin uh, monitor here on an articulating arm on the bench I do have a little remote control for the power is running a original linear power supply that I can power the bench with for all the Williams work. Square that up. And you can see it goes right into a track, so that tells me all the, uh, you know, the battery and everything, all the settings are staying, no problem. Um, I've also got a PlayStation controller I, I've wired up to my bench. I've got a Arduino-based system where I can load different configurations, so I can play def everything from Defender to Bubbles, Robotron, even Sinistar, I simulate the uh, 49 way opticals, uh, you know, in pro programmatically. So I can coin it up here. Start. Yeah. 
So you can see it's playing great. All sounds are really good with all the new filter caps in there. So I'll drop into diagnostics here. Whoops. We're into bookkeeping data. So I'll drop into diagnostics. All ROM's good. No RAM errors. CMOS is good. This will we'll loop through a few sound tests. And then they just go back to one. And then this is a switch input test. And again, all the uh, up, down, left, right, fire up, fire down, left, right. We've got coin, player one start. We've got auto up. This is one of the di three diagnostic switches in the coin doors. And then the advance. And then we go and we get the uh, grid lines here for setting your convergence, if you were to use that. Uh, red, green, blue. And then we get color bars. And then we get our bookkeeping data. And then here's where you go into, you know, your configurations where you can set free play and a, a track message and all that kind of good stuff. And then back to a track mode. So uh, rock solid. It's ran for over 24 hours on the bench. Uh, no issues at all. Again, the really the only problems I found were too bad uh, RAM. Um, and the, the ribbon cables didn't look great that I pulled out. Again, I don't really test the boards before I work on them. The first thing I do is get all those Molex and electrolytics and ribbons, you know, replaced, and then I put them on the test bench. So a lot of times, uh, you know, those would have, those are pretty common failures. So sometimes, you know, the board's fixed by the time they actually make it to the test bench here. So, uh, it, it ran reliably for, uh, again, for over 24 hours, and I'm going to get this one boxed up and get the joust going next for you.